Welcome back to the channel folks. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial and today I wanted to give you folks my reaction to NEO's earnings. Now, I mentioned this very briefly in my Patreon group, uh, but I, I'm actually relatively satisfied with NEO's earnings and let's be clear, I find them to be just satisfactory. I find them to be in line with uh, what I expected. Um, you know, I actually expected a widening loss because of how much they're putting into uh, expansion of their business, how much they're putting into their sales network, how much they're putting into their whole Neo Life expansion, and how much is going into building new factories and research and development. So uh, it's actually only going to get worse from this point in terms of widening losses. And let me explain to you why that's not such a big deal. Uh, that money is going into building out new factories. Uh, they're building out a giant factory complex um, in, in Jinghua province. And that is going to be part of a giant industrial park that's set up really for uh, research and development for electric vehicles and have the manufacturing facilities right there. And they're also going to be greatly expanding their sales network. Right now it's really concentrated in the north of China and they're gonna be expanding that outside of their original area. So that's going to get worse, but that gives us actually a preview into Xpeng's earnings as well, which are coming out next week. And let's talk about that. I expect relatively similar results from them. Uh, maybe even a little bit worse because let's look at what's going on with them right now. They're actually right in the middle of a second factory build out that started back in September. And uh, that's still going. They've also committed huge amounts of money to research and development. And they still have this need to build a, out a network of charging stations. So their charging stations, uh, the ones they own at least, have lagged pretty far behind uh, their competitor, NEO. Now they are plugged into the same uh, power uh, sharing network app that NEO and a bunch of other um, you know, companies are, but they are committed to expanding their charging network as well. And they really need to build out a better sales network. That's the one area where they're really far behind. They haven't spent as much money uh, building out their sales network. They kind of took a different road. And I think I covered that in another video where they had sort of like this ad hoc marketing campaign where they would park a P7 and a Tesla right next to each other in some random parking lot and have some hawker on a microphone, uh, you know, uh, with a microphone out there screaming the differences between the, the P7 and the Tesla. That's a unique approach indeed. I, I wonder how that worked. I haven't seen any numbers on how that strategy worked. But uh, I did cover that in a video and I got that from someone else's YouTube video, but uh, I'll try to put that link to the original video in uh, the description. You know, that was actually pointed out to me by a friend of mine who was in China, who said, go ahead and check this video out. I actually witnessed this myself. And uh, he said it was really, well, he's a Westerner, of course, so he thought it was a little bit odd, but he was actually highly entertained by the Chinese salesman who was doing the comparison between the Tesla and the P7. He said the crowd was laughing. They thought it was a great time. And they were allowed to crawl inside and all around the car. So that, that approach is something I'm really interested to see the results. I don't know if they quantify those results or anything like that, but that would be really cool to see. Um, so they're building out the sales network. And let's remember also that Xpeng recently committed to funding a couple of different subsidiaries. Uh, one of them has to do with AI robots. They have a new company that's a new wholly owned subsidiary um, that's, that's committed to research and development on artificial intelligence. And their goal is to sell you know, AI robots to different industries. Um, and they also have a goal within that same country to, uh, within that same company rather, to build a battery swap station manufacturing components and battery swap stations. Um, I'm not sure if this means that Xpeng is eventually getting into battery swapping themselves for their vehicles, or they just wanna provide battery swapping stations for other companies that are gonna try battery swapping. Who knows, I'm leaning towards me thinking that they're eventually going to include battery swapping for at least one of their vehicles. Now, maybe if they move down market to a vehicle that's even cheaper and smaller than the P7, like a really small sedan, where the range might be impacted with a smaller battery, then they might consider doing a battery swap network too. I don't know, uh, they may consider integrating with um, with Neo's battery swap network because there's a lot of cooperation there and maybe they just produce uh, battery swap stations for Neo as well. I don't know, let's see what happens. Um, anyway, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today also was something that I've never really talked before and that's Fisker. And I'm gonna admit to being a little biased against Fisker and I'm gonna reevaluate that bias I read a really good article uh, a couple of days ago that uh, one of my coworkers sent me on Fisker abandoning solid state technology for now, solid state battery technology for now. And this article has me reevaluating my excitement also with NEO's plans to adopt a solid state battery in 2022. 
that announcement may well have been premature. I had several members of the community here at Fighting Words Financial and a couple people on my Patreon have commented that uh, I wasn't critical enough of Neo's plans to uh, Neo's plans for a battery for the ET7 and that the solid state technology really wasn't ready. You know, I kind of countered that with uh, some stories that I read in Chinese media about solid state batteries that are already in production and already commercialized. But now that I look at this and look what Henrik Fisker is saying, I'm starting to doubt really um, that that battery technology is going to be ready for the ET7 by 2022. It's not going to have that 600 mile range. They're going to have a battery technology that looks kind of similar to what they have now. So I think I may have been overly optimistic about NEO's plans to adopt solid state technology. Uh, basically, Fisker is stating that based on the research that they did, that the, the battery was essentially, the solid state battery rather, was essentially 90% there. Um, on, on battery tech, but the final 10% was proving to be way too challenging given the constraints of current technology. And I'm basically paraphrasing what Henrik Fisker said. He said that the move to solid state battery composition is going to require some sort of significant breakthrough followed by years and years of development and ramp up of production to something that's that's commercially viable. You know, and th this is basically what he said. He said that he thinks that they're personally about seven years out, if not more, in terms of any uh, high volume format. He said once that you have a breakthrough in the technology, you're probably going to need to get have three years to set up high volume manufacturing and another three years, another three years for durability testing. So even if someone invented it today, that high volume production, something that's available available to be put into a vehicle is probably six years out. Now, I haven't covered Fisker before. You know, I looked at them years ago and I was kind of disappointed by their lack of ability to execute. But I have to be honest, like I, I read this article and I was I, I found I found Fisker's uh, honesty be honesty to be really, really refreshing. And uh, and I think maybe that triggered something in my brain where I've been ignoring this company because I followed them years ago and was disappointed when they never really came through on uh, on what they said they were going to do. And I realized there are just thousands and thousands of different challenges that have to be overcome. And that first go around, Tesla was the only company that really managed to overcome those challenges. But now we're really having a second wave, you know, a third wave of EV companies coming out. And at least a few of those are going to end up being successful. A couple of those. Uh, Fisker may be one of those. I don't know. But I'm going to be looking into that company and doing videos on uh, on Fisker here in the future as well. Just because uh, this article really kind of piqued my, my curiosity. Uh, there seemed to be a bit more self-reflection in there than we see with a lot of these uh, egotistical CEOs out there. And uh, anyway, maybe that's the wrong reason to look into a company. Maybe that's the wrong reason to reevaluate something. But I'm going to do that just because, like I said, I like to check my own biases on occasion. And you guys, my community, help me out, whether it's here in the YouTube comments or through my Patreon. Um, you guys are always telling me when, when I might be wrong or I should look at something else. And I actually really appreciate that. So let me know how wrong you think I am today with this video. I look forward to hear, hearing your comments, and I'll see you next time.